All right, guys, the Utah Jazz lose their second in a row tonight against the underhanded Spurs. First thing I want to say, when I hear that LaMarcus Aldridge is not going to play, it's not something that makes me think, oh, that means what the Jazz are going to win because I'm not a big LaMarcus Aldridge fan. It just feels like there's a lot of evidence that he just does not impact the game as much as you would hope or think that he would. He's been playing better as of late, and some of that's with the three-point shot. The Spurs have been playing much better, you know, the last 15, 20 games than uh, compared to when they started the season. So the Jazz caught them at a bad time because they've been playing well, especially DeMar DeRozan. And tonight it was the DeMar DeRozan show. DeMar DeRozan just roasted Utah tonight from the mid-range. Tonight, 11 for 19 uh, from the mid-range. Did not take a single three-pointer, and he did not need to because he took 19 field goals. He was 16 for 19 from the free-throw line. Now, how he has 19 free-throws, I don't know because last game it's like I don't know how many – free throws Eric Gordon took, but that's a problem. And some of that's the refs. And some of that is jazz defenders need to stop fouling. That is how you lose games. And that is the major reason the jazz lost tonight was DeRozan just roasted us. Royce O'Neal has to be better than that. And whoever else is guarding, guarding DeRozan has to be better than that. You cannot give 19 free throws to DeMar DeRozan and expect to win that game. You cannot let him get to his spots. So one thing that the Spurs do, and we all know, is that the Spurs do the mid-range game. They are more comfortable than any team in the league, take, team in the league taking that shot. DeRozan loves the mid-range. He, he got everything he wanted tonight. And even if you guide people to the mid-range, which is what the Jazz game plan is, is to get get shooters into the mid-range, which is a less efficient shot. When you're playing a team like the Spurs, who are okay taking that shot, if you're going to guide them to the mid-range, you have to at least make them comfortable or not guide them to the spots they want to be in. So let's say DeRozan's at the three-point line, and by the way, he took zero three-point shots tonight. Perhaps you could back off a little bit of DeRozan and knock him out of his funk because what they did tonight is just allow him to get into rhythm. If DeRozan wants to go to the strong side baseline and take that shot and he's making it all night long, maybe let's take that away. Now that's on the player and that's on the coach. You've got to figure out how to do that and stop that. But tonight, DeRozan buried the jazz and it was going to that right side pull up three or pull up mid range shot. And also he buried the jazz from the free throw line. 19 free throws is just ridiculous. I thought the refs tonight were garbage, but the jazz have to stop fouling. If you notice the refs are being uh zebra douchebags, then you need to stop fouling or you need to adjust. It's like baseball. If a ref is, if an umpire is calling a corner strike zone in a way you don't agree with, you need to adjust. You either need to swing or lay off, you know? Same with basketball. If you've got uh, Tony Brothers calling things a certain way, you've got to adjust. Otherwise, the other team is just taking advantage of you. DeMar DeRozan saw what they were doing, and he took advantage. He roasted the Jazz tonight, and that's part of the game, too. Read the refs. Read what they're doing. If they suck, there's nothing you can do. All you can do is adjust. So... Props to DeMar DeRozan, who is a solid player. I don't I don't think I'd ever want him on my team, but when he's cooking, he's really good. For Utah, uh, this is two losses in a row, and that spurt of wins that was really nice for Utah, where they were uh, winning 19 of 21 or whatever it was, and win streaks and all this was really fun, but it's very clear they've picked up some bad habits where we start the game not very, not with a lot of force. There's no juice. And this game was lost in the first quarter because the Spurs had a nice lead. And by the time the Jazz actually picked up their energy to win, it was over. There was nothing they could do. And you had already given the Spurs a rhythm that they wanted. So this was on the Jazz defense. There's two things that were really frustrating. One, Tony Bradley could not be on the floor. And Quinn Snyder kept him on the floor regardless. And I was at least happy that Quinn Snyder put in Ed Davis. But in Bre and in Tony Bradley's minutes on the floor, he was a minus 16 for the worst min plus minus of the team. And that affects everybody. He could not be he couldn't stay on the floor. And so Ed Davis came in and actually gave was a plus three positive minutes. I think that's telling. That's something to watch. Like Bradley can play against a rolling center really well. But if on these spread floors, man, he has been absolutely unplayable. And that's on Quinn to not recognize that. 
There's got to be a point where the coach has to say, this guy can't do this against these rotations. And we just have to play the right player for the right situation. And if that means you sit Bradley for Davis over against a spread floor team, do it, you know? And these those trash refs, when they called that foul on Rudy in the third quarter, at the beginning of the third quarter, it was his fourth foul. It was a terrible call. It is Quinn Snyder's fault that he brings him out of the game. That lost the game because Tony Bradley was a minus 16. That lost the game. This stupid thing we do where if a player gets four fouls in the third quarter or whatever time frame it is and we pull him out, it knocks you out of your rotations. And Quinn Snyder, who is so big on rote rotations where this player comes in at this exact minute and second, You've got to sometimes gamble a little bit. And if anyone wants to say anything to me otherwise about that, they lost the game. So there is no counter argument to it. So if you're going to pull Rudy Gobert, you better do something that makes up for the fact that you've got Tony Bradley who cannot stay against the spread floor team. But what we do is nothing. You know what you could probably do? If you are so set on pulling your best player off the floor because of one extra foul at a time point you time frame you don't want him to get it, when the refs are calling ticky-tack fouls and it's whatever, then you better do something to counteract what the other team is doing. Not play the lineup that will lay just play into the hands of the opponent. So what happens is not only do we pull our best player because of a, a rule we have, I guess, with fouls, but then we put in the wrong player to make up for it. So we put in Tony Bradley, who got absolutely roasted, and that was the game. You know what? Try something else. Do something to impact them. Put in Royce O'Neal. So instead of having Tony Bradley play against the starters of the Spurs, do something else that throws them off. Get a Put Royce O'Neal at center or something. Bring in Mike Conley. Put Royce o at center or something like that. Or Nyang or anything. But to just like play into their hands, you can't do that. If you expect your players to play impact defense and impact offense and do things correctly, then you need to do impact coaching. You need to impact what they're doing, not constantly react to what they're giving you. So play something different. Do something that forces them to adjust in con instead of constantly having to adjust to what they're doing. This is two games in a row that we are just reacting to what they are doing against the Rockets who are spread five and now against the Spurs who spread the floor again. Guess what? Pop watched like five minutes of that last game and said, wow, Quinn's going to just put in Bradley and we're going to eat him for lunch. And that's what happened, you know? And I'm I'm not saying I'm smarter than Quinn Snyder. He's smarter than me. But anyone who watches this team and covers this team and covers basketball can see that the Jazz are just reacting right now. And no more reacting. Impose your will. Just It can't just be the player's fault. You have to set up the players to succeed. If you are setting them in to, to do things that they are not capable of doing, Tony Bradley is just not Rudy Gobert. He is not able to guard the perimeter like Rudy and then recover back. He's not able to do it. Rudy Gobert is very special, and that's one of the things he can do. By putting him in, you set him up to fail, you know? By the way, why wasn't Mike Conley playing more? Mike Conley played well tonight. Guys, I don't want to hear anything on the comments about Mike Conley. He was good. It was not Mike Conley tonight. Mike Conley was nice. And at some point, they need to start Mike Conley. Uh, shout out to Griff Dunk, who shared a stat uh, where you got to look at Joe Ingles' minutes where he's on the floor with Conley and without. Joe Ingles needs to figure out how to play with Mike Conley. It's just got to happen. I've talked on Twitter about trade possibilities for Utah. There's not a lot. It's really just not there. And so you've got to figure it out. And Joe Ingles has to figure out how to play with Mike Conley because the last two games he shot like 10. What tonight? Joe Ingles shot one for four from three and he was one for seven against Houston. That's not good enough. The Joe Ingles has to figure it out. And Mike Conley looks like he's willing to work. And I think it's just a matter of time. That injury sucked with, my, with Mike Conley because they weren't able to figure it out. But Utah needs to. <laughs> they have to. And if the Jazz want to become a championship contender and beat teams like this with relative ease, then Mike Conley has to be the reason they do it. And it wasn't tonight. They didn't figure it out tonight, but Mike Conley looked better. Anyways, guys, that's the rant. I was frustrated. Like and subscribe to this channel. I will talk to you later.